everybody. It's Coach JJ with NA Prep. I'm here to talk about the 1224 check. Come on in. All right, we're going to talk about the 1224 check. Everybody understands from our last video that we had what a four check is. A four check is the first line of your defense that actually starts in their zone. So if this is the opposing team zone and they're breaking the puck out, we start our defense. This is the way I teach my kids. We start our defense starts in their zone. So anytime that you do not have the puck, you are on defense. So if your team does not have possession of the puck, you are on defense. And your job is to take the puck, hump the puck down as fast as you can so that you can regain possession and then become on offense. The 1 2 2 is probably my favorite four check. Let's break this down real quick on the 1 2 2. The reason why we use the word 1 2 2 is because we have it in like three layers of our defense. All right, so check it out. Here's our first layer. We'll put a 1. He's our first guy. We'll make a second layer. We have a 2. And then we'll make our third layer. We have another 2. What happens is our 1 guy will become whoever is in front. And this is another question that a lot of kids have when they. When they talk to you about the four check, well, I'm F1, I'm F2, well, then what does F3 do? Well, listen, it is, this game is a game of high intelligence, and your job is to understand who you are at that given moment. Just because you might be an F1, we might label you F1 one time, you may not be F1 the second time. So here's how you determine this factor. If the closest man to the puck is always F1. So it doesn't matter if you're staggered anywhere on the rink. If you're providing pressure and you're that first man, you are F1. It is so important for kids to understand each position and each role and that it inter- Face off, we start off as a right wing and we start off as a center, we start off as a left wing. But during the game, as the game progresses, we may have to swap sides and exchange lanes. So you're never truly tied down to this one position that you have during the game. Your job may be to support a player who has gone down or might have gotten out of position, thinking that they could have made a play. And your job is to read and react to that and cover those positions. So here's how it's broken down, though. Let me go back to what I say. We have a one, we have a two, we have a two. And this is our formation that we attack in. So just for the sake of it, I'm gonna just going to put an F here because that's usually a forward. Okay, every once in a while you might get this D who just provides this great rush, puts the puck down, and he still chases it. That guy actually becomes F1 even though he's a defenseman. But let's go back to this as a forward. We have a forward here. Traditionally, we have a forward here. We have a forward here. Okay, so this is how it's broken down. F1, this guy could be F2 or F3. It all depends on who's closer to that puck. And here you're going to have a D man, and here you're going to have a D man. Okay, I'm going to erase these numbers. Hopefully, it doesn't confuse you. So the reason why this formation is called the one to two is because the one leads the rush, the twos in the middle are reacting to the play, and the other twos are also in the middle reacting to what this group of forwards is doing. Okay, so here's how it's broken down. If you are F1, if you are the first man, your job is to always herd your competition. You want to herd it. You want to push it in a direction so that is undeniable which way this guy needs to go. So if I'm F1 and I'm pushing in, I have to take a route that convinces this guy right here, convinces him that I'm coming for him. And I'm going to want to try and do my best to push him to push him to this side of the rink. Now, what that does, as I'm pushing this guy to that side of the rink, it forces this player to make a play up the wall, to skate the puck, whatever it is, up this side, which is exactly what you want in this part of your forecheck. Now... In, F one's, in F2's job, because he's the second man, he's the strongest next man to the puck, he becomes F2 on this one right here. Now, he's thinking in his head, his mind is going off right now, filled with endorphins and, and thoughts and all this good stuff. What am I supposed to be looking at right now? 
So this guy right here, he is trying to figure out where this man right here is going to put this puck. His job is to herd that play. His job is to herd everything to this side. And now that you see the defense been coming up and the, you know, the breakout may be happening on this side with a winger here and center there, but we've pushed this play to this side. So now this guy knows he can just come in and attack because he's going to run out of real estate. So he's going to have to make a play because of this push from the F1 pushing all the traffic to the left side of the ice. So he's going to have to be forced to make a play. He knows that. Now this D-man right here, his job is to read what F2 is doing. And this D-man is picking up the bottom of the trash barrel. As F2 is providing that instant pressure, let's move him down a little bit. F2 is now here, making sure that this man does not get the puck. We have F1 over here who's doing a great job pushing and herding cattle to this side of the barn. So he's herding over here and pushing this competition here. So now we've got this covered all in here, this guy. So F can get to, they try to give it to the center here. F1 can combat that. If they try to give it to D, he can provide pressure there. But now most likely these D, especially at the peewee and squirt level, um, if you're starting to understand these these uh, these four checks, this is a really simple one. It is one that teaches kids urgency because this will fail if you do not have an urgent team. There are some teams that just don't have the urgency um, and want to be first to the puck all the time. They more look at the play, they more observe the play, and there's a different four check for you if that is the team that you have. My F2 urgently goes down and makes sure that this guy right here does not touch the puck. And if he does, he meets him there with body contact and holds his position up. Good stick checking, good triangle attacks. So he's going to go and stop that guy there. Now, this D is all prepared as he moves up and reads this play. He's right here in front of the blue line. I always tell my D, I want you about a foot in front of the blue line. And the reason why I say that is because when mistakes happen, like I bobble the puck, I can usually get regain control within a foot of that blue line, but if I put my D on the blue line and I make a mistake on the blue line, that puck comes out of the zone and then it's an offside and we have to regroup and do all this stuff. So just for sake of argument, get your defense about a foot, foot and a half in front of that blue line. And so now we are in a really good position for a great turnover. Let's clean some of this up a little bit. So our F1 did a great job hurting cats over here hurting this D hurry making them hurry the winger here pushing all this play this way this way this way this way and our forward that was here who is F3 now he's gonna move into the center area this area also called the anticipation area if you heard the last video this is all about where you anticipate it's a great successful position for players and thinkers because F3 is here and he's able to really read the play and find out where he's going next. Now, my D, I move up to the blue line right there, okay? There's no need, if we break down the ice, there's no need to have your D on this side of the rink at all if the play is on the strong side this side. Because we're just wasting an opportunity to keep that puck in and we're wasting, we're giving an opportunity to give the other team time and space to break into our space. So I always make my D stand at the half, about halfway up the, up the rink, supporting his partner. So he's close enough to help if he needs, but he's also in a really good position defensively, just skating back down the middle of the ice. If it becomes a two on one or a one on one, he's able to, he's able to take that. So as we've pushed this here, we are, F3 is in a great position. We've got the play moving in this direction like we wanted. This guy passes the puck. F2 attacks and bumps him. The puck comes out here, bounces off the wall, right to our defense's hands. F3 is now reading that and says, oh, this is exactly what we wanted to happen. He moves down here. We get a pass from the D-man, and we get a shot, possibly a two-on-one, quick transition, two-on-one, uh, that happening down low. Okay, so this is an awesome position. This is an awesome forecheck that I absolutely love that has always worked for me. And it's definitely my go-to to start just about every game. So let me, let me line the players up like you just saw here. Matter of fact, why don't you tell me? Do you remember who was here? That D1, exactly. 
You got that D1 there. Do you remember who's here? The D2. That's what you said. Hooray. Now, the pressure was here, so this guy was our F1 who was putting pressure toward this direction. And we had our F2 who was reading that and putting pressure where he feels the puck is about to come. Because this guy's about to make a big turnover. And this guy's also about to make a turnover because there's just too much pressure. Remember who was here? If you said F3, correcto mundo. And we have F3. So now we're in a really good position right now. We're in a very good defensive position. We're in a very good offensive position to make some really good plays happen. And we're controlling the side, entire side of the ice. And this side is actually called the strong side. And the strong side is the side that the puck is on. We say strong side or weak side. We split the ice down in half. Let me just show you this in case you didn't get it in the last one. We have the left lane. We have the right lane. The lane that has the puck in it is called the strong side. The lane that does not have the puck in it is called the weak side. There's no action going over here. It's weak. Nothing's happening. Okay? Now look, if the D, and this is the part that you have to really, this is where F3's paying attention is really, 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 really important. Because let's just say that F1 did get beat over here. And the D read that play. He curled out and skated it, or he shot around. He's got a D partner over here that's going to come in and get that. He's also got a center probably in here. And he's also got a winger somewhere in here helping out. Okay? So let's say the defense does do a reverse, reverses the play. Now, this is where it is so important that your team is urgent and has the intellect to understand what they do. This is what I was telling you before, that there are no F3, no assigned positions. All read and react. So now that the puck has gone over here, let's say the puck is over here now, because he threw it there. Now this D is this D is gonna have to go and try to retrieve it to get the puck. Now, the closest person to this puck right now, who has the best angle is on it, actually becomes F1. So we're gonna for for this sake, the last F3 is probably the best man to provide that pressure. So he's just gonna bolt down. Full bore, boom, bolt after that puck, try to beat that D to that puck. Hopefully he's reading the play and reacting. So now, F3 now stops being F3, and he actually becomes F1 on this attack over here. Now watch how it rotates and unfolds, okay? It's going to rotate and it's going to unfold now. So F1 is providing pressure here. This guy is probably most likely going to be F2 on it, and he's either going to chase this way or just chase in front so that he has that opportunity to head that puck off okay and f2 is most likely going to move is going to become f3 on this one so he'll be in the middle now and obviously our d will shift our d will shift and now he becomes or she becomes d1 or sorry now she becomes D2 or he, and over here is D1 because it's who's closest to the puck that we give that number to. So now our whole play has just shifted because the puck moved to the other strong side, moved to the strong side, and the closest man to the puck was here was an F1, was F3 turning into F1, and this old F1 actually provides the pressure and tries to read that play. So his job is to read, read, read. Am I going to attack back here? Is it better attack here? Do I have a better chance there? Or do I have a better chance of cutting across? Because what these teams are trying to do, what this guy is trying to do, he's trying to get the puck up to his winger. So if you're telling your forwards that, they know I need to get over here and cut that playoff. So that if he can make this guy cough the puck up, then we've got a puck that bounces right out to this D. And like I said, F3 is now engaged where F B1 either takes a great shot and F3 goes for a rebound, second chance shot, rebound shot, rebound goal, or D man slides it there, and these guys curl back into the play and now have a you know a, a two on two on one. Okay, let me go over this real quick with you again too. I know it's been kind of in detail, but I want you to understand that I also want you to feel free to ask any questions that you may have about what you need to do in these situations. 
Here is the one, two, two as we break it down. The reason why is because we have a forward here leading the pack. We have two forwards behind him. We have two D behind them. Now, F1 is always the man closest to the puck. And his only job, because he's F1, is to make sure that they go to one direction. That is it. It is simple. Let your players know that. F1, your job is to herd. Your job is to corral and contain this play right here. And we're just going to go on this side this time and say the puck is there with their D-man over here. And what his job is, he wants to push. Let's say that's his push. He wants to push all play over this way. He wants to create a funnel. He wants to create a funnel so that this D ends up pushing the puck up the wall right to this F2 whose only job is to cause a turnover in the, on the wall. I usually don't want them going down there because then that becomes a 2-1-2, two, two, and that's a little bit different of a four check. We want this F2 guy getting ready to break up this play, really reacting. We have a winger here. This F2 is really reacting and timing it, waiting for that D to make this play so that he can come down and attack. This D is doing the exact same thing. He is exactly looking at this forward seeing what he's doing and providing a support and pressure, an additional pressure, so that when F2 makes this guy cough the puck up, D1 is right there to get it. So F2 moves in for the attack, D1 moves in for the attack, anticipating the chip up, anticipating the turnover. And now we have this new positioning again right here. We have D1, and we have now an F2 who's right on the play. Now, F1 has done a great job hurting all these people over. So now F1's job is done. He's still providing attack over here. He's been putting pressure over here. They fell into our trap, into our tunnel, which is great. Now our F3 moves into the high slot area and our D one foot in front of the blue one. Okay, in front of the blue one. So that is the one, two, two, four check. Your players need to be all about the go in this play. Just a few points. When I work with kids and I work with the philosophy of, of, of developing players, what I understand by this is it really teaches hockey IQ better. We want these kids to be on it. We want these kids to read and react. We want them to be prepared for these scenarios. And we want them to be very defensive-minded and very, maybe not defensive-minded, I think more offensive minded. We want them to want to score more. And if you want to score more, you have to be the team that plays better defense. You have to have a better hunt and you have to have a better attack. Those teams are the teams that win championships. Please remember, the stronger defense that you play, the more offense you will have, the more possession time you will have, the quicker you take the puck away from the other team, the more opportunities you will have to score. These are my favorite reasons of why I like this one, two, two. One, I think it helps you with hockey IQ. I think the kids learn quicker through this process, through this four check. I think it's easier to read. It's easy to understand the responsibilities. At the same time, it also creates a, a very competitive learning environment. Um, two, I think it's, a, it's just simple to teach. It's very simple to teach. It's so easy to become frustrated because they don't get it as fast as you know it. But just remember, you know, these hockey lives, they've only been really playing hockey on this planet for, you know, some of these kids at this age, three, four, five, six years. That's it. That's really as long as they've been playing this game where these kind of strategies are implemented. And so it is so important that you give them time to understand. I've had coaches that were really good at explaining drills that I understood better. I've had coaches that go on the ice and they go, okay, move here, here, there, cone there, make a pivot, go around there, go there, and go here. And I was sitting like, what? But then other kids would be like, oh, I got it. Yep, got it. No problem. But me, I had to be able to see it done. And I think it's important that we understand that we have so many different kinds of learners that we need to make sure that we teach to each learner and give everybody give everybody that, that area to fail because the only way that anybody in, in this game, the only way anybody becomes successful is through failing and learning how to fail and learning how to get through these failures and learning from all of these things. So 
don't knock failure. Do not knock failure. Um, allow it. Make sure you under, they understand that it's a process. You're okay with it. You'll get way better production from your players. Um, and the third reason why I really love this is because it works. It really works. And when we do this, the kids really feel like, man, that was really successful. This this four check is, is legit. And when you do it right and your kids are all functioning, it is hard to combat. So that is the one, two, two, four check. Thank you for joining us today. And I will talk to you soon.